In these last three sections, we're going to talk about some applications of math. And the next two, applications of geometry. This one, we're going to apply geometry to the arts because a lot of art reflects geometry. To begin our discussion of mathematics and art, we first need to define exactly what art is. Do you have to have a definition for it? As human beings, we are surrounded by art and often take its influence on our lives for granted. For the purposes of this section, art will be considered as any endeavor that requires creative creativity of the mind, whether it's a painting, a sculpture, architecture, a musical composition, etc. The Fibonacci sequence is the sequence of numbers that goes like this. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so forth. Here's what it's doing. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, and so forth. It continues in infinitely where each successive number can be found by adding the, the, together the two previous numbers in the sequence. Now, why are we talking about the Fibonacci sequence when we're talking about geometry? You'll see in a few minutes. So Fibonacci, originally, his sequence, sequence goes something like this. He was interested in rabbits for some reason. Start with a pair of rabbits. One male and one female, born on January 1st. Assume that all months are of equal length and that rabbits begin to produce offspring two months after their birth. When the rabbits each, each reach the age of two months, each pair then makes another rabbit or another pair. And assume that no rabbit dies. How many pairs of rabbits will there be after a year? Okay, so here's how it goes. The first month, this is our month here, we've got one pair, the original. The second month, we still have the original pair because you can't have babies until after two months. So, the third month, we now have the original pair. Plus, we have the new pair of offspring. So, that's one pair plus one pair is two pair. The next month, we've got the original pair. I'm going to call it OP. Then we've got the new pair from the previous month. Let's say a new pair from month two. Plus, the original pair is going to make another pair because they can. So now, we have three pair of rabbits. In the fifth month, we've got the original pair. We've got the pair from month two. We've got the pair from month three. Then, we've got another pair that the original pair made. And we've got a pair that the pair from month two made because now they're old enough. So that's five pair of rabbits. So you get the idea. The next month we'll have five, we had, we'll have five plus three or eight rabbits. The next, 5 plus 8, 13 rabbits. 
8 plus 13 is 21 rabbits. 13 plus 21, 34 rabbits. Tenth month, 21 plus 34 is 55 rabbits. 34 plus 55, 89. And 55 plus 89, at the end of a year, we have 144 pair of rabbits. So, 288 rabbits after a year. The next question asks us, what's the 25th number in, in the Fibonacci sequence? Well, we've already found F of 12 in the previous. It was 55 plus 89 or 144. So, to find f of 13, we would have to take 89 plus 144 to get 233. f of 14 would be 144 plus 233. 377. f of 15 would be 233 plus 377, 610. And so forth. 37 plus 610, or 337 plus 610 is 987. 610 plus 987 is 1597. 987 plus 1587 is 2584. And we just keep going. Almost there. Seventy five thousand twenty five is the twenty fifth number in the Fibonacci sequence. So, why were we? talking about the Fibonacci sequence, well, there's a couple of, there are lots and lots of applications of the Fibonacci sequence in nature. And one of them is this triangle here called Pascal's triangle. In Pascal's triangle, they take a one at the top, and then another one and a one, okay? And then from there, all the way down is ones. But in the middle, it's the previous row added. Or the, or the two directly above added. So, one plus one is two. Okay? One plus two is three. Two plus one is three. One plus three is four. Three plus three is six. Three plus one is four. 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 10. And it keeps going like that. This triangle produces so many things. I may be asking you to do a project. And so you could choose to do your project on, on Pascal's Triangle and talk about the different things that happen with it. But one of them is, is if you take everything diagonal like this, it's actually Fibonacci's sequence. One, one, two, one plus two is three. One plus three plus one is five. One plus four plus three is eight. One plus five plus six plus one is 13. And it keeps going. Just to tell you, a couple more applications of Pascal's triangle are powers of 2. The first row, 1, is 2 to the 0th power, of course. The second row, 1 plus 1, is 2, 2 to the 1th power. 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4, that's 2 squared. 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 8, that's 2 cubed. 
1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1 is 16 to the fourth power. And it just keeps going every row. You need to see down here, even at the 15th row, add those up and it equals to the 15th. Another application, it's called Magic 11s. If you just look at the numbers themselves and don't add them, multiply them, anything. So 1 is 11 to the 0th power. This is not 1 plus 1, but 11, okay, is 11 to the 1st. 121 is 11 squared. 11 cubed is 1,331. 11 to the fourth power is 1,000 or 14,641. And it keeps going. So it's really neat all the things that you can get from Pascal's triangle. So why did we talk about Fibonacci sequence? Well, the golden ratio and we'll look at a picture of it here in a minute. The golden ratio is something that is, you'll see a lot in nature. That's another something you could do a project on. The sequence of ratios of consecutive terms of the Fibonacci sequences is this. So you've got one, one, two, three, five, eight, and so forth, okay? So you're, you're dividing by the previous number. So one divided by its previous number of one. Two divided by its previous number of one. Three divided by the previous number, two. Five divided by the previous number, which is three. Eight divided by the previous number, which is five, and so forth. Each of these ratio, the higher you go, approaches this number. Something even crazier. I mean, it's really interesting, all this stuff that happens. As the ratio of larger numbers is considered, it, it, it approaches 1.618033988. Keeps going. This number has been given a name, like pi or e. It's phi. P-H-I is said phi, like just like F-I. And that number, phi, is the golden ratio. You can find phi by this little formula. It's 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Show that the ratio of the 22nd and 23rd Fibonacci numbers is approximately phi. So we found the 22nd and 23rd numbers. The 23rd was 17,711, and the 22nd, or nope, I got that backwards. The 22nd number was that. The 23rd number is 28,657. So if we take 28,657 and divide by 17,711, you get 1.618, which is very, very close to the golden ratio. Mnemonic growth is growth that occurs based on a previous amount of growth. Fibonacci sequence is like that. It, it grows on the previous amount. And here is the golden spiral. Again, based on the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Think of a nautilus shell. You've seen these before, right? This spiral grows in a special manner that can be modeled by the golden ratio. We call this spiral the golden spiral. Every turn, every quarter turn of the spiral gets wider by phi. So if you start in the inside, we have one, one, 
another quarter is two, another quarter is three, another quarter is five, another quarter is eight, 13. That is Fibonacci sequence. This means the shape of the spiral can be approximated using the Fibonacci numbers. A golden rectangle is a rectangle in which the ratio of the length to the width is a golden ratio. Verify that this rectangle is a golden rectangle. So the length divided by the width, that'd be 9.305 divided by 5.75 we want to see, is that approximately 1.618261? Yes, it is. So this is considered a golden rectangle. There are golden ratios in the human body. I mean, it's in shells, it's in humans, animals, flowers. Many of the things that you see in nature are employing the golden ratio. This isn't an accident, people. <laughs> the golden ratio plays an important role in the human body. As rigorous mathematical analysis has shown that on average, human beings and their skeletal stru structure have many golden relationships. Like the height from your foot to your belly button or your entire height divided by that navel height is the golden ratio. In your finger, um, yeah, that one's kind of hard to show. This distance divided by this distance is the golden ratio. This distance in your finger divided by this distance is the golden ratio. You've probably seen those pictures where you've got a human standing with his arms out like this. That And there's all kinds of things going around. That's an example of the golden spiral in humans. A golden triangle is defined as an isosceles triangle. So two sides are the same, whose length of a side compared to the length of the base is the golden ratio. And golden triangles are the basis of other geometric figures, such as pentagons and hexagons, that are used frequently in art and architecture, like the U.S. Pentagon is made up of these golden triangles. The United Nations headquarters is said to have been built using the golden ratio, where the width of the building compared to every 10 floors is the golden ratio. So the width and 10 floors. The height of the entire building is 516 and three quarter feet, and it contains 39 floors. That means there's 13 and a quarter feet per floor. So every 10 floors would be 132 and a half feet. The width is 214.33 feet. And so, using this information show that this relationship indeed exists. So if we take the width and divide by the height of 10 floors, we do in fact get approximately 1.618.